RF Man here. Today I'm going to be talking about a different type of amplifier. In the past, most of my videos focus on a push-pull topology. This series of videos will focus on single-ended amplifiers, specifically looking at Class B and comparing that to the performance of a Class E. So we'll get into the details of all the different amplifier classifications as we move on. We're pointing out the specific advantages for class E. So in order to understand different amplifier classifications, it helps if we take a look at the load line, which is what I'm showing here. Basically, this can be either for an MPN or or a PMP transistor, could be for a MOSFET, a variety of different transistors, but this shows the Q point or where we bias the transistor. So if we look at the load line here and we look at the various regions, we basically operate a transistor between cutoff when it's completely off and saturation when it's completely on. In between is known as the active region or the linear region. Now with class A through C, we operate somewhere in this linear region. But for other classifications like class D or E or beyond, we're basically using those as switching amplifiers. And we'll talk about the details. So how do I determine the classification? Basically, it's the bias point, okay? So for a bipolar transistor, it's the base current. You see these are basically the characteristic curves for a typical bipolar transistor. And you can see we increase the base current, and that raises the Q point. So if we bias a transistor in the middle, in the center, this is typically called class A, and it allows for the full sine wave to be amplified. So we have the positive end and the negative end of the sine wave. Other classifications use a lower Q point, and that results with a less conduction angle. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so if we take a look here, this is a chart showing the different amplifier classifications. So we have class A through class C, and then we have these digital modes, okay, which start with D and E, F, and beyond. And this presentation will focus on class E and compare it to a class B amplifier. That's the primary objective here. So we see the different classifications. So class A, we have a full conduction angle, transistors conducting at 360 degrees, and then we go AB, so it's 270 to 360. Then class B is 180 degree conduction angle, class C 90 degrees. Okay, and again, we, we also have these switching modes. So these classifications operate in the linear region of the device, the active region here, okay? But these other modes, class D, class E, these are considered switching amplifiers. So we'll talk specifically about that as we move on in the presentation. So what this chart shows is if I have a class A at a 360 degree conduction angle, I basically have a much higher linearity because I am conducting the full 360 degrees, but much less efficiency. The efficiency is around 35% typically. Okay, now as I move from class A to AB, okay, you can see that I'm conducting about 270 to 360 degrees. Okay, so I have a lower linearity but a higher efficiency because I don't have the full conduction angle. And then if we look at class B here, it's only a 180 degree conduction angle. Okay, so typically this has a higher efficiency and even a lower linearity. Okay, and then class C, 
we have lower linearity and higher efficiency, as you can see denoted here. So again, how do we determine these different classifications? So what I'm going to show is for each amplifier class, okay, we'll look at some of the different topologies that are available and where we would set the Q point. So this is a class A. It's a single-ended, so about 35% efficiency, as we said. And we bias it at half the VCC point. So if I'm operating the transistor at 24 volts, it would be half VCC. So when we have our input signal applied, we are able to amplify the full input signal, the positive end and the negative end. So we have the positive transition and the negative transition being amplified, gives us the best linearity, but the lowest efficiency. So that's when we put the Q point in the middle. Now, if we go to class B, Okay, and there are different topologies that are used when we talk about these different classifications. Here I'm showing class B push-pull. This is a very common type of topology, but you can also design a class B in a single-ended topology with a single transistor. And that's what we'll be looking at and focusing on throughout this whole video series. Now this will be a multi-part series. I don't know how many parts yet, but we'll just have to move forward and see uh, where we end up. So here's a single-ended, single transistor, class B amplifier using some type of a matching network. And what did we say? That the conduction angle is 180 degrees. So where do we bias that? We bias that transistor at cutoff or slightly above cutoff. So for a MOSFET, the, the cutoff would be no drain current. Um, you could have a small amount of drain current and still be considered class, class B. And typically I use a, about 10 milliamps of, of drain current for most of my class B amplifiers. But they're biased at, at cutoff, and that allows 180 degree conduction angle. And then we move on. Here's class AB. Again, it's a push-pull. And here we're looking at, well, where's the bias point? Okay, it's somewhere between half VC and cutoff. So remember, half VC was the center of the load line. Here we're between cutoff, which is the very bottom, and half VCC. So we can actually put the conduction angle at 180, 270, or even above that approaching 360 degrees. And then finally, this is a class C amplifier. Now I'm showing a single-ended class C, but again, this can also be a push-pull amplifier, okay? And we actually bias that below the cutoff. So you've probably seen a lot of RF amplifiers that use a push-pull topology. And on the base for a bipolar transistor, we often see a 10 ohm resistor to ground, okay? And I've had a lot of questions, what is that resistor used for? And basically it's used to bias the transistor below cutoff, okay? So we only get about 90 degrees conduction angle when, when we drive it with a full sine wave. So this basically shows each of the classifications and the bias point for each and the conduction angles that we would expect. Okay, so as I said, for any classification of amplifier, there's a lot of different topologies. They could be single-ended, single transistor. They could be push-pull, e even other topologies. So these are just different examples of single-ended amplifiers that use either a bipolar transistor or some type of MOSFET. Um, today, we're gonna be keeping it relatively simple. We're just gonna have a single-ended Class B amplifier, all right, with a blocking capacitor and then some type of matching network. So I'm gonna be looking at, in this presentation, an L network or a Pi network, you could also use a matching transformer on the output. Uh, that would
provide similar results. But just to keep the circuitry pretty simple, I'm going to be looking at and simulating the L network and Pi network first using LT Spice and then looking at the actual circuit. So this would be a good time to quickly transition over here and to provide a look at the circuit that we'll be analyzing. This is a class B amplifier using an L network. I also built it with the Pi network so you'll be able to take a look at the spice simulation and also the actual waveforms from the circuit itself. So that's what the general circuit looks like. Of course, we'll get we'll get back to that and look at that in detail on the scope. Okay, so we'll be focusing on the L network or Pi network for this topology. So let's take a little closer look at that. Um, let's talk about class B amplifiers a little bit so that when we look at the class E, you'll be able to see the differences and see the advantages of a class E amplifier. But but both use a single transistor, providing a simple and compact design. Uh, they're suitable for high power applications. As I, as I mentioned earlier, they have a higher efficiency than class A or class B, but a lower efficiency than class C. Um, they have lower harmonic distortions than class C. And the theoretical efficiency of a Class B amplifier is 78.5%, but that's using an ideal switch with no parasitics. In the real world, as I showed on my other slide, you'd really expect about 60% efficiency or less. Um, but the theoretical is 78.5% using an ideal switch, an ideal component with no capacitive reactants or inductive reactants, no parasitics, no output capacitance, etc. Okay, and the advantage here, what gives us some of the higher efficiency is in idle, right, we're biased at cutoff. So let's go back to that for a minute. Okay, we're 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 at the we're at the cutoff region here when it's biased. So it's not conducting any current when it's idle and this provides us with even greater efficiency okay um, class a we're conducting quite a bit of current when it's in idle okay so what are our design requirements for class b um, as i mentioned it's going to be a single ended transformer i'm going to be using yes once again the irf 510 um, it's a very uh, cost effective transistor to use and performs quite well um, at the frequency ranges that I'll be demonstrating. So we're going to start with class B operation and then we're going to modify the circuit for class E and we're going to compare the results. But we're going to get a good baseline on what a class B amplifier is before we actually focus on class E. It'll provide a much greater understanding that way and allow us to compare the advantages. So the input power is going to be about 1.2 watts. Output power, we're going to basically design a matching circuit to give us 24 watts of output power. Frequency is 13.56 megahertz. Target efficiency, 50%. And the DC voltage will be 24 into a 50 ohm load. So that's our design requirements for this Class B amplifier. So. We need to design a matching network to drive our load. So I mentioned this in my other videos. I have a series that's called How to Design, Build, and Test an RF Amplifier. I go into much greater detail in that series. I'm going to just touch on these concepts briefly, but if you want to get more information on that, then I would suggest that you uh, take a look at my other series. So. The formula basically to determine the output impedance, it's basically VDD, this could be VCC for a bipolar squared, divided by two times the power, okay? So what did we say? 
we have an IRF 510. Okay, our output power for this design will be 24 watts. This component can be driven up to 45 watts. So we got about a 50% derating on the, on the power. And then we have our drain voltage at 24 volts. So some simple arithmetic here. Okay, 24 squared is 576. Okay, 2 times P is 48. And we divide 576 by 48, we get 12 ohms. Okay, so we're going to be matching the 12 ohms to, yes, 50 ohms, our standard load that we use for RF designs, RF amplifiers. So how do we do that transformation? Um, there are a lot of online calculators that you can use, and it provides very simple results. It does give you the calculated values, so you'll have to substitute with either standard values or use a combination of inductors and capacitors to achieve the calculated values. Typically what I do is I'll go ahead and use the closest standard value, and if it's way off, then I might combine two capacitors in parallel, for example. Um, but try to use the standard values if you can, get as close as you can to the to the calculated values. So you basically just plug in, okay, the source impedance is 12 ohms, the load impedance is 50 ohms, it's all resistive, and we calculate what the L network should look like. So this is a low pass filter, right? We have a series inductor with a shunt capacitor, and the inductor has low impedance at lower frequencies, right? Capacitor is the opposite. So this would be a low-pass frequency, low-pass filter. It would pass the lower frequencies and attenuate the higher frequencies. So these are the values for the simple low-pass filter, 250 nanohenries and 117 picofarads. And there's the Q that we're using. Okay, it's a very simple calculator. Here is the URL. Um, if you want more information on this, again, my other video series goes into a couple of different calculation methods that you can use. Okay, and then for our pie filter, we're doing the same thing. Um, here you select the Q of five. I try to use five throughout each of the designs, the class B and class C. I'm not talking too much about the Q factor here, but the higher the Q, the narrower the bandwidth. Simple as that. It's a ratio of the reactance over the resistance. So the higher the ratio, the, the narrower the bandwidth. And again, if you want more information about the Q, you can take a look at my other video series. But typically, a Q value of 3 or 5 um, would provide us with adequate bandwidth. And then we just, again, put in 12 ohms as the source impedance, 50 ohms as the load impedance, and it calculates the values of the inductor, okay, again, being low pass, and then also the source capacitance and the load capacitance. So you see those values right there. So that's what we typically will, will do to basically provide an impedance transformation from one load to the other. So here we're, we're trying to match source impedance to load impedance, 12 ohms to 50 ohms. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the Class B amplifier and the different filters that we would be using. So with an L network, here I have my switch, my transistor. I'm showing here a bipolar. This could also be a MOSFET, doesn't matter. I've got an RF choke, I've got a blocking capacitor to block the DC from the load, and then my matching network. So if I use an L network, basically what I'm going to have is my fundamental frequency, right, the, the signal that's coming in, but that's going to generate a number of different odd and even harmonics. And in this case, we're more concerned about the odd harmonics because they're going to reshape the input signal. So here we show fundamental and then we show the third and fifth harmonic and when they combine with the fundamental they're going to distort this signal okay and reflecting back those harmonics and they're going to be distorting 
our fundamental signal, our fundamental frequency. So what do we end up with is a signal that will include the third harmonic and the fifth the harmonic. And what determines the shape of this will be the amplitude of these harmonics plus their phase in respect to the fundamental signal. So you're going to get a shape that looks something like this, a distorted half sine wave, right? Remember, conduction angle is 180 degrees, so we're only conducting the positive end of the sine wave. Even though we have a full sine wave on the input, again, we're only conducting the positive transition or positive end. And you're going to see, again, a combination of the signal with the, with the harmonics. So let's take a closer look at that. Here is a basic circuit in LT Spice, Class B amplifier. You can see it's biased at cutoff with just a slight amount of bias current. And I have my AC signal, my sine wave here at 13.56 megahertz. I've got a coupling capacitor. I'm adding a series resistor here. Um, this, again, would be used for stability. I've got more information on that on my other presentation. But um, basically, this is a, a dampening resistor. It dampens the Q of the circuit and prevents the MOSFET from oscillating. Okay, so we typically call that a series gate resistor. Okay, and again, the biasing, the RF choke, blocking resistor, and then here's my L network with the values that we calculated. Um, it's easy to achieve the exact calculated value with the inductor because I'm using an adjustable type inductor and I just went with the nearest standard value for the capacitor. So that's basically what the circuit looks like. Now if we escape out of this, um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and set up LT Spice so we can actually look at the simulation real. Alright, now I'm back. Here's our Class B amplifier in LT Spice. And as I mentioned, with the PowerPoint slide, we have a single-ended transistor, we have a small amount of bias, we have a blocking capacitor, and then we have our L network, which provides some filtering, but also provides the impedance transformation from 12 ohms to 50 ohms. So let's go ahead and simulate this circuit. And let's take a look at the drain voltage which would be right here. I move my pointer over and we run the simulation. Let's take a closer look at what we have here. And there's the voltage waveform that we'd expect to see. Here we have our 180 degree conduction angle, but we have harmonic content. This is what we saw on the PowerPoint slides. There is a fair amount of harmonics in the waveform. So that's before the L network. Now let's go ahead and delete that trace and take a look at the signal after the L network. And you see we have a fairly good looking sine wave there. Could still have a little harmonic content in there, but it's reconstructed and filtered out the harmonic, so it looks like a, a good looking sine wave. So let's go ahead and now remove that trace. and look at the power output. So if I mouse over the load resistor and then I do control, you see that symbol there means power. And we click on that. And there we have our sine wave and it looks like about 27 watts of output power. Remember our design goal was 24, so fairly close, not bad. All right. So let's take a look now at the Class B amplifier. We're going to look at the voltage waveform first. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the current waveform. And what's important here is the overlap between the voltage and current. 
and I'm going to explain that when we go back to the PowerPoint slides. But here we're looking at the drain voltage and drain current while the transistor is switching on and off. And this is where a transistor dissipates most of its power during turn on and turn off, where we have an overlap between the voltage and the current. Okay, so we can see here when the transistor turns on, the voltage drops. Okay, it's turned on. The current rises. So here we have an overlap during the crossover. So this is where the power is being generated during turn on. Now what happens during turn off? The current drops and the voltage rises again. And once again, we see we have overlap. Okay, voltage and current. So... This is basically E times I power, where we have voltage and current, which causes the power dissipation in the transistor. So that's what the simulation looks like in LT SPICE. Uh, my intention here is not to go into all the different features of how to use LT SPICE. There's plenty of online videos. I go into a little detail on my other video series. You can take a look at that, but there's plenty of information. This is a free download online, and it's fairly easy to use this simulator. There's a lot of good information, good material on it. Okay, so that's our L network. Okay, so let's go ahead and minimize that and go back to the PowerPoint slide. And back into presentation mode. And that's the circuit we just simulated. So what did we see? Here's the voltage waveform. When we go ahead and take a look at the actual waveforms from the circuit, okay, I basically have photos of those waveforms. So this is from the simulation of the Class B amplifier with the L network, okay, and this is the actual waveform, which we'll be looking at in part two of this video. And you can see the waveforms are very similar. So this is the drain voltage, and then on the other side here, is the other side of the L network, this is the output waveform. Okay, so you can see a lot of the harmonics are filtered out so we have a good looking sine wave here. So these are the actual waveforms from the circuit that we'll be looking at. And then we looked at the crossover as well, right? Here's the voltage waveform, here's the current waveform, here's where we have overlap during turn on and turn off, that's where we have power dissipation. And you see the same thing here. Okay, so I'm looking at the drain voltage and also the drain current. I use a current amplifier and current probe to actually look at this waveform. And we'll, we'll take a closer look when we demonstrate the circuit. Um, but that's what it's going to look like. And here we have overlap and then as a result, power dissipation. So here's the circuit. I just changed the time base. So you can see the waveform spread out a little bit more, and you can see the areas of overlap a little clearer. Um, but this is the main concern, and when we start talking about class E, this is the primary difference where we can shift the voltage and current and minimize the overlap. And we'll talk a lot more about that. So this is what it's all about when we talk about efficiency. Here's our class B amplifier. As I said, here's during the turn on point of the transistor. So the drain voltage drops as the drain current increases. This overlap is where we have power dissipation. Okay, and you see they break it out here. Okay, and then during turn off, what happens? The voltage rises again and the current drops. And again, we have an overlap during this crossover, and again, more power is being dissipated. So we refer to that as switching losses. As it switches on, as it switches off, we have these switching losses. And again, it's E times I power, just simple Ohm's law. And we also, in addition to switching losses, we have conduction losses when the transistor is in the on state. Okay, whether we're using it in a linear application or switching application, we will also have conduction loss, but there's very little we can do with that because that's determined by the RDS on of the transistor. 
So there's not much that we can do with the conduction losses. Now, what is the primary difference between class B and class E? Here are the ideal waveforms for class E, okay? And we're using basically a series resonator to reshape the waveform and to shift the voltage and current. And what we call this is zero volt switching. So here again is the drain voltage, here's the drain current, but you can see because we have shifted the drain current, okay, when it switches, the voltage is at zero. So zero voltage, zero current, there's no power dissipation during turn on, okay? And then during turn off, we see the same thing, right? We've reshaped the waveform with the harmonics so that during turn off, we also have no overlap. And this dramatically reduces the switching loss in the transistor. We still have conduction loss, but that's only a small percentage. It reduces the switching losses because we're able to shift the phase between the voltage and current and reshape the current waveform so we have zero volt switching during these transitions. And there's no power loss or very little power loss. Class E can theoretically achieve 100% efficiency. In the real world, it might be closer to 90%. Um, and that's due to the parasitics in the transistor. In an ideal switch where we have no parasitics, yes, if you simulate an ideal switch, 100% is achievable. Um, but when you use a real transistor that has input capacitance, output capacitance, um, also has some inductance, that in the real world you'll see that the efficiencies may be closer to 90%. So this is what it's all about, is reducing the switching losses by shifting the voltage and current and reshaping the waveform. All right, so here's our pie filter, okay? I'm not gonna go back into LT Spice and simulate the pie filter. I've got all the screenshots and photos here, so I'm just gonna go through this. So here, basically, once again, looking at the drain voltage. Now let's, let's, quickly, let's quickly go back and remember with the L network, there was a lot of distortion, right? It doesn't filter as well, okay? So now we're looking at the Pi network, also low pass, low pass filter, but it filters a little more efficiently, and this circuit has a Q of five, so narrower bandwidth. And you can see that the drain voltage looks much better with the Pi filter. So here's the simulation. Here's the actual waveform from the circuit. This is before the pie filter, so you still see some distortion there, but after the pie filter, we see a very good looking sine wave. And then, as we did with the L network, we're taking a look at the simulation and crossover during turn on and turn off. So turn on, voltage drops, current rises. You see less overlap, and then turn off, right? Current drops, voltage rises, and again, overlap, okay? And here, this is the actual waveforms. You can see that the SPICE simulation does very good at simulating the actual waveform and the distortion, the harmonic components in that waveform. So here's the simulator waveform. Here's the actual waveform for the pie filter. Looks like a reasonable match. And again, I spread out the time base so we can look at these areas where it overlaps a little closer. Okay, so what does this come down to? All right, I built the Class B amplifier. I looked at the waveforms, and I calculated the efficiencies. And basically, we take the drain voltage, right, that we have here, okay, 24 volts, and then we take our current from the power supply and it's E times I. So basically the L network, we were consuming from the power supply 48.2 watts, okay? From the output, and I was reading off the watt meter and also using Ohm's law, E squared R. This, this is incorrect, this should be E squared R. I think the two 
shift it over a little bit. Um, e squared R is 22 watts. And so here we have how much power we're dissipating. And here's our efficiency and our temperature and our SWRs. So you can see the efficiencies from the L network and Pi network are fairly close. So this will become our baseline. Let's just call that 45%. This will become our baseline um, when we compare the class E amplifier to a class B amplifier. We'll use 45, 50% as the target. Um, even if we use the, the ideal perfect case, 60%, we'll still see the advantages of the class E amplifier. Okay, so before we move ahead, um, this concludes part one. Part two, we'll actually take a look at the circuit, at the class B amplifier, and look at the waveforms and go through the calculations again. Um, so we'll be uh, working on part two and get it out there. RF man, thanks. <laughs>